Okay, I noticed that uh, my last video caught some traction. It's a little outdated now, so I'm gonna, I decided to redo it. Uh, so here we go. We're going to create a topo topography in SketchUp and then transfer it over to Rhino so you guys can, one, 3D mill it. You can 3D print it, do whatever you got to do with it in Rhino. It's a little bit more adjustable as well. So to start off, I'm going to go to File, Geolocation, Add Location. Uh, so I am in, I picked a really uh, hilly area. This is near Denver. Just something that shows the topography pretty well. I'm going to do it right off 285 here. Select the region. You can scale this up, down, whatever you're going to do. Uh, I'm going to scale it. Just keep it there. It doesn't really matter. Import your site. So it shows up as a flat. Uh, go over here to the layers tab. Location snapshot, turn that off. Location terrain, turn that on. And here you can see the terrain. It looks like a bendy piece of paper right now. I'm going to select it. <clears throat> Go to export 3D model. I already have one in here from the test. So I'm going to name this in a folder called for, from SketchUp. Do an STL file. From the STL file, go to Options, Export Only Current Selection. This would ensure you don't get to bring in this location snapshot in there. File format binary is fine. Swap X or YZ coordinates. Some programs require this. Rhino does not. Uh, then I'm in America, so I'm using feet. Then you hit OK. Make your name. Export. Yes. Go back to Rhino. I'm going to import, just type in import. Importing this, and it will pop up some options. Here's your options here. STL model, whatever you did your last model in, so say I exported it to feet, just export it to feet again. I have a bunch of different ones, but I just always do feet. Um, and I keep this stuff the same, just hit OK. So now, looks like we have the surface in here. So if I actually go to shaded, Actually, go rendered. You can see it's not perfect. You got some of these divots in here that don't look very good. We're gonna fix that. All right. So next step is going to be contour. Contour creates a bunch of lines. If you haven't used it before, it basically just creates a bunch of lines. Uh, Collect your base point. Base point. This is just selecting the direction. So hold shift and hit up. And then distance between contours. This is a pretty large topography that I just pulled from SketchUp. So I'm going to do probably 10. That's probably still not enough. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to cancel that. That'll take forever. Contour, select the object by contour. Type in your direction. Hold shift up. You're going to do both sides, so it doesn't really matter which one you start with. Distance between contours. Now that was a little much. So I'm going to do 50. That's better. I want it to be giving up the space where it pulls all that information, but not so close to each other, close to each other where it slows your computer down or slows the processing down. So we're going to do that one more time. Uh, I'm going to actually flip this to a different layer, change layer to layer one. Call it SKP Topo. We'll lock it. And then the contours that I have selected right now, we'll just keep those on default for right now. <clears throat> Alright, so I have I have the north-south ones, now I need to contour again. Contour base point, we're going to do that same corner, and we're just going to go east to west. Just between contours, keep it the same at 50. It's going to go all over again. There it goes. It's creating a little network. All right, now I'm going to hide this layer. So when I hit this layer, you can see now I got like a curved network that resembles a mesh or something similar to that. But I also have the edges here that need to be trimmed up. All right, so we're going to do that next. So I'm going to select all of these, type in trim. Select objects to trim. This is where you just come in. I zoom in. 
I want to pull like two or three of these lines, so I just want to make sure I get a nice edge. I take a little bit, and that's the goal right there, is just to remove one edge. Get a, get a really hard edge is what I'm trying to do. So let's do that one more time. Actually, we have to do it three more times. I got all that cleaned up. I'm gonna hit enter. It finalizes my curve, and now I got a nice little cleaned up version. You can see it's got hard edges. That's what we want. <clears throat> so now I'm going to, <clears throat> excuse me, create a surface. So it's N E T work surf. There it is. Select curves and network. Boom. Alright, uh, do you want to continue? So it's going to take a little bit. This is just right on warning you that your computer might crash. So I do recommend saving before this. I think my computer will be able to handle it, so I'm good. Alright, now this is your surface from Curve Networks. Is it okay? Alright, there's your surface. Like I said, it's going to be pretty bogged down. So now next step is going to be smoothing out the surface. This is basically the same exact thing as the topo. Uh, I'm going to switch my layers over. This is the surface. You can see how crazy that is. Change this layer. Change this on the purple layer. I'm going to hide that. Alright, now all these are on the default layer. Uh, so now I can switch over hide the default layer, and here's the surface, so the big difference with this, this one says actual, it's an actual surface. If I go back and I bring up the SketchUp topography again, this one it's locked. This is a mesh. Meshes are not necessarily workable in Rhino, they're not very friendly, but surfaces are. The surfaces can be turned, put points on them, and etc. So next I'm going to do is, so my computer doesn't crash on me, I'm going to rebuild this surface to make it look a little better. So type in rebuild. And then this describes how many U points and V points. That's basically your X, Y, how many points are in this thing. So 70, you're going to have to mess around with this. It depends on how big your topography is. But you want them to be evenly spaced, similar to what we just did with the contours. I'm going to try 100, 100, and then hit Preview. So you know, you can see we're starting to get smoother. Maybe you want that to be even smoother. All right, so now you can start to see what I'm talking about. With a wireframe, this is actually easier to see. The goal is to make it smooth without distorting it too much. So from here, say I wanted to edit this curve up here. It looks pretty smooth, so it's not bad. You can go in, you can actually change these points, edit points on and off. And it changes it into a point network. So I can go take this one, take it down. I'm not going to do that. But that's essentially what that does. Right click, turn points off. All right. So that's that. That's creating the surface that you can work with. The next step is going to be creating this to a 3D object. That way you can get it into your CNC mill uh, 3D printer, etc. So what that's going to look like, I'm going to go to the top, you know. <clears throat> Create a box. Create this box that looks something like this. You want the box to be bigger than the actual object you're going into. Because what you're going to do is use this purple object as a trim. So you're going to make it taller, but you're going to make the insides just a touch 
in. So I just want it to be a touch in. The reason being, as you can see here, you want it to actually cut the surface. If it's the same, you might get a Boolean uh, error. So I'm just pulling these objects in a little bit. And then what I do is I select. So here you can see the surface. The surface is inside of the box. All right. From there, you go Boolean split. Select cutting surfaces for poly surfaces. That'd be this surface is what you're cutting it. This is the object you're cutting. This is what you're cutting it with. Then once that's done, you hit enter. So it says create meshes. So now you have, you have two surfaces. One here, which is the top half. Delete this. And you have the bottom half. So I'm going to hide this purple layer. Now I have my now I have my uh, object which I can use to CNC mill. From there, say you want to scale it down. I'm going to take this and do 0 0.01. Now I have an itty bitty site. So if I were to actually measure this now, that's still equals 63 feet. So if I were to put this on a CNC mill, you must have a massive CNC mill. But from there, now I can export this to whatever the CNC mill takes, which is usually STL file, and you can export it that way. So there's that. There's your little site. There's your massive site. You can go and import this into, like, say, Revit or something like that and model on it. To, to check to make sure you did it right, type in volume. And it will show you what type of volume you have. If you don't get that right, let me go back to the smaller one. It will show an error. How to check this, you go to see this is a closed poly surface. If it was not done correctly, it would say open poly surface. Hope this video helped. Uh, it was a little bit winded, but um, it did show how to do this correctly. And I hope uh, you learned something from the video. Thank you.